Hello Isopod fans, this is Wally Kern with Supreme Isopods and we're here for our 10th episode of Isopod Setup Review. 10 episodes, what is that? Is that diamonds, gold, platinum? I think 10 episodes is more like cork bark or something like that. So join me today for a really cool Isopod Setup on a very, very different Isopod. The Isopod Vlog I want to thank everyone once again for sending in your Isopod setup review videos. I'm having a bunch of fun doing these reviews and I think everybody is learning something from these reviews as well. Thank you again. If you would like me to review your Isopod setup, send me a one minute video, about one minute, and tell me how long it's been established, what kind of Isopod you're keeping in it. Tell me a little bit about the substrate, the moisture content, how often you're misting or watering, what foods you've been feeding, what kind of woods you're using, what kind of leaves. Tell me as much as you can in about one minute or so and send it to me either on Facebook at Wally Kern or Supreme Gecko. And before we get into this review, I just want to thank Russ Wilson once again for this wonderful shirt. I'm probably covering it up with my mug here, but uh, go check out Russ at Aquarimax Pets. Thank you again, Russ, for this wonderful shirt. He's doing great videos on isopods and other animals as well. This isopod setup video was sent in by Andres, and I'm, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that name right, and this is a really different isopod. It's Armadillidium officinatus. So let's go ahead and take a look right now. Hello everyone, these are my isopods, Armadillidium officinalis. I keep them in this glass terrarium. I picked up some leaves from the forest and uh, boiled them. I also bought some springtails and they seem to be reproducing a lot, <laughs> as you can see. We'll go ahead and stop it right there. The leaves look wonderful. You boil the leaves and boiling the leaves or putting them in black plastic bags out in the summer uh, heat certainly can take care of any unwanted guests into your isopod setup. Wonderful job. Lots of leaves. I love it. Love it. And you have plenty. Look at the, all of those springtails. You have plenty of springtails. Springtails will help clean up the excess food that the cleanup crew, your isopods, don't finish off. So wonderful job here. The glass aquarium, very unique. And again, this is more European than US uh, based. Europeans tend to spend more time and set up their, uh, I feel, their uh, environments better than the Americans do. And that's really cool to see. I love this glass aquarium. You'll be able to see the isopods better. You'll be able to see the substrate. You'll be able to see them burrowing in. It's just a very, very, very unique uh, setup. Wonderful job. I would worry a little bit about the glass. They're not going to climb on the glass, obviously, but the silicone uh, holding the sides, isopods might be able to climb up those sides or where the uh, silicone is. So make sure you watch for that. Let's keep going. I also took some moss from the forest and thoroughly washed it so any hitchhikers don't get in this terrarium. Here you can see some isopods. I, I also got this moss from a fellow breeder, which I got my isos from. Let's talk about this moss for just a second. So I go to the store, I buy a bag of sphagnum moss. It's brown, it's been cleaned, it's been filtered, it's been processed, and I bring it home. I open it up, I take a wad, and I throw it in my enclosure. And that's my moist area, moist area. And that keeps that uh, enclosure a little bit damper, a little bit moister, a little bit higher humidity. And that's great. And, and it works for me. But here Andre is setting up his moss right from the wild. He's gone out and he's collected this live moss himself and set it up in his enclosure. It looks super nice. Very good job. Let's keep going. I feed them shrimp twice a week. And yesterday I gave, I gave them some spinach. And I made sure that they have a lot of soil so that babies can bury in it. I'm going to go ahead and stop it right there. So it sounds like you're feeding shrimp and the um, cabbage lettuce. 
Uh, and that's great, but you should vary that diet. The uh, vegetables should be a little firmer. They should have more nutrition. You know, you can try carrots, you can try zucchini, pumpkins, or a great food, squash. Uh, you're feeding shrimp, and that's a good food for protein. I to Lydia need more vegetable uh, matter in their diet than porcelio and other isopods. But try a little bit of a variety, and maybe you're already feeding that variety. Uh, as long as you have the, the uh, dead leaves in the enclosure and decaying wood, you're doing great. The substrate is nice and deep. Again, with this enclosure, this glass enclosure, you'll be able to see those babies uh, and the adults in the uh, substrate burrowing in. Wonderful, wonderful job. You don't tell us what the substrate is made up of. It looks like a dirt compost mix, at least from my um, view here. So I think that you're, you're good to go there. Let's keep going. Speaking of babies, I have this colony for two months and I found one female with her babies. I covered them with this piece of acrylic. I plan to cut it out and drill some holes for the ventilation. And for now, I keep it slightly uncovered. Okay, really good job with this setup. Uh, congratulations on the babies. If you're getting babies, then you're good to go. I, I would give this setup uh, probably a green because it looks really nice. Uh, you can enjoy your isopods. Everything in this enclosure is set up very, very well. I don't see a couple of little points that I, I see that might be an issue is that I don't see any decaying wood. The wood that you're using is a good hiding place, but it's not a nice flakeable uh, decaying wood. So I would add a couple of pieces of decaying wood in there. You don't talk about calcium and you have to make sure absolutely that you have some kind of a calcium source in this enclosure, whether it be cuddle bone or eggshells or calcium carbonate, something, some kind of a source for calcium. I thought for a second there that you were leaving this enclosure completely open. That's why I made the comment about the silicone sides that they'll climb up those edges. If you're covering it, perfect. It'll be interesting to see the top when you cut it out and put the ventilation holes. Make sure you have plenty of ventilation, obviously. I don't see a cross flow of air here. If you put the holes in the top, you'll just get the source from the top, but you won't have any cross uh, flow. So you want to be a little bit uh, careful about that as well. Other than that, I think this is a wonderful enclosure. Again, it looks great. I give it a thumbs up. You did a great job. Thank you very much for submitting this. Again, isopod fans, if you'd like to send in your submission for an isopod setup review, please send it to me again, Wally Kern or Spring Gecko on Facebook, and I'll take a look at it. Thank you everyone for watching. I appreciate it. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit the notification all. And thank you very much for watching.